All right, appreciate you joining us this afternoon here. Uh, really uh, um, pleased with the start of spring football. We uh, had our sixth practice on Saturday. And uh, you know, we're really kind of in the process, I think, of going through and reevaluating spring, I think, as a whole uh, college football. I know it's been a big emphasis uh, in, in a lot of the committees we've had and head coaches meetings and just trying to look at the big picture of, of the calendar uh, from start to finish. Uh, I know the NFL is doing the same thing. and evaluating fall camp and how that looks and spring football and how that looks and how we train and and the hitting and the pounding on the body and all of that kind of effect. So we're, we're probably going to continue to evaluate that even throughout this spring and, and use. So I know some other programs are going some different methods of, of utilizing these 15 days. So uh, we went ahead and had a, a scrimmage on Saturday. It uh, wasn't a full scrimmage. Uh, it was uh, Probably half of the time was spent in that mode uh, to create some some game like situations. We, we did go live, which I think is very very important. So, but uh, at the same time, just really trying to really have long staff discussions about what it's going to look like moving forward. And so, uh, with that, I just thought it was a really good next step for us. Uh, we actually had three practices prior to spring break, where we usually have had four in the past. Uh, we've already utilized all of our our uh, cloth practices, as we call them, uh, per NCAA rules, where we just wear spiders and helmets only. We've already done three of those of the six, and so two in shells, and then the one Saturday, as we said, was in full pads. So uh, just thought that, uh, uh, like the flow we're in, uh, as we're making some adjustments, you know, with new coordinators and different things, but uh, at the same time, I uh, really love the, the energy of our guys, the focus of our guys. You know, obviously got new coaches. Adam Henry, uh, his first time being with us here this past week, uh, uh, just really excited about him. Uh, just a great fit for us uh, in his um, coaching philosophy. Is uh, love his demeanor, love the way he um, coaches our guys, and just the, the confidence he brings and the experience he brings, and uh, is, is elite and special. And uh, just I uh, think he's just got a great heart for our players, and that's what I want. So uh, really excited about all the new guys we've got. But obviously he's uh, uh, the newest one we've had as well. And so and just being able to. To, to grow our staff and, and bring in guys that, that fit with us and, and, and help us, uh, you know, continue to build our program. And also have added Rod Carey uh, to our um, uh, quality control staff and uh, really excited about him. And I know he uh, played here, loves Indiana. Uh, just want to welcome his family. Uh, just really, he's going to be really assisting us on defense uh, and also assisting me as head coach. Um, and with all his experience that he's had. And just, uh, you know, once again, it's guys that uh, love this place and uh, want to help us uh, continue to build, build the program and build what we're doing here as, as, a, as a football team. So really encouraged by the progress we're making with our guys this spring. Got practice number seven uh, in the morning. We'll be back in shells and then uh, uh, again Thursday and then Saturday as well. So uh, just continue to get better as we progress through uh, each one of these practices. Questions? Yeah, that, that's probably been the biggest thing just because it is even different than the last time I called it and uh, did not have a person in that role. And, and I thought it was real important that we did. And uh, the thing that I think has been so good is, uh, you know, we're really aligned in the whole motivational leadership piece with the defense, um, kind of things that we want to set as you know cultural expectations with how we practice and and the things we emphasize with takeaway tackling effort that doesn't change, uh, but the organizational part of that is where he really comes into play and and the, the, the tackling circuits and the teaching of all that and the takeaway circuits and the teaching of all that and uh, he's added some really good things I thought to those that's been really good, and uh, you know scripting everything he that's really where his role and then all the walkthroughs. He runs all those with our guys and our staff. And, and we also have a veteran group of guys on defense that, that have been here and, and really know, especially in the back end with, with uh, Brandon and Jason have been here for many years with us. And so, uh, but uh, really been encouraged by the progress that they're making there, you know, obviously. So what we kind of do it just, you know, so during the week, uh, most everything is pre-scripted. If we do have a, a situation where we might call something, like if we just move the ball, or it's more open-ended than I would have 
Chad call that on a Tuesday or a Thursday, and then I do all the calls on on the scrimmages. So I did all the the live goes on Saturday and called that, and uh, so that's kind of be the way we'll we'll kind of maneuver that and allow that to become a part of our our, our uh, weekly you know flow as a staff and then and then it allows me to be able to be involved on offense you know on monday wednesdays and fridays i sit in all those meetings and film reviews with our offense and and the different things with that and then also allows me to be able to to be involved defensively so just i think it's it's i like it where it's at and i think chad's doing a great job great energy and uh, just we got a standard of how we want to practice and how we want to play and He's doing a great job helping us uh, get to that, where I, getting it back to where I, I know it needs to be. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm okay. Um, from the scrimmage on Saturday, I think you said just half the scrimmage, but um, anybody in particular on either side of the ball kind of stand out or any position that you were pleasantly surprised with as far as how they played? Yeah, I would say uh, just some guys that stuck out. Um, you know, Cam Camper is one that uh, I don't know if it was necessarily just the scrimmage, but it's been that way pretty much probably throughout uh, each one of the practices. Um, this is really kind of stuck out to me. Emory, Emory Simmons is another one. I think of two running backs as well. Um, you know, Sean Shivers and and uh, Josh Henderson. I just think those guys have really, um, you know, been, you know, they're new, obviously, all four of them. But uh, uh, when you go live, you kind of get you a chance to see, you know, where those guys are at. I thought, uh, you know, we were able to do some good things um, up front as well, you know, offensively to be able to give us some, you know, time to get things done when we need to throw the football and create some creases in the run game. So, um, but I also felt like we tackled well, you know, and uh, that's something yet we haven't tackled live since the bucket game, you know, so that's a long time. And uh, we've been working really hard on fundamentals. So I thought the the, the defensive unit would really be more predominantly the, the backers and the safeties and the corners um, have most of those plays in space. And and so I thought those groups, you know, performed solidly. I did think, you know, just typical, you know, you have, you know, mistakes and things you got to correct and, and all that. But uh, from an offense perspective, those guys stuck out to me. And I think uh, Noah Pierre's the one on defense continues. You know, we're kind of, you know, He's, a, he's obviously shown a lot of flexibility for us in the past. And, and uh, even Maurice Freeman's a guy that's, that's coming along. I think the more live we go, the more he shows. And uh, I think, you know, Caden Turner makes him. It seems like it's one of those for a guy like Caden, you know, whenever we go and just play football, you know, and he didn't have to think as much. He's, he just, you know, he makes plays, you know, and that's what you're looking for. And same with Jordan Greer, you know, another guy that's young and needs to continue to grow and develop. And, and uh, I think that's uh, – um, you know, super positive for us, you know, and so I just got to continue to bring these guys along. And then on the front, you know, Miles Jackson uh, continues to to flash and show so uh, bursts of, of both athleticism as well as just strength. And I really like the way he's playing right now, and, and now he's you know making us better. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's uh, um, really solid. You know, they're learning, you know, a new offense, and, and that's always challenging without question. But uh, I thought that uh, um, Jack in and, and Connor kind of stood out, you know, on Saturday, you know, as far as making plays and, and uh, grasp of the offense. And, and uh, as Donovan keeps getting reps, and, and uh, you know, Dexter's another one that's just kind of, you know, he flashed to me. Um, and just because, you know, he's been out for so long, and, and uh, his athleticism, I thought, showed, and then also his just his arm strength, you know. So it's a good group of guys there, and, and Grant's getting lots of reps and the chance to keep competing with all those guys. And, and uh, you got a, um, a group of guys right now that's uh, pushing each other um, in a lot of those meetings with them and, and Coach Bell does a great job challenging them and, and really getting them mentally ready to be, uh, you know, he's, you know, I, I like the, the the edge he has about him as he runs that room and runs our offense and expectations he has for their performance. And, and to me, it's reflective of that. And that's what you got to have, you know, it's, it's, I think you kind of coach him like coach, you know, linebackers and, and, and put them under a lot of pressure and stress and, 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 and create that, you know, ability to, you know, not be flustered or not be uh, negatively impacted by, you know, the craziness of a game. Hey, Coach, I wanted to go back to the spring calendar a little bit. What, what's your current thinking on kind of the pros and cons of having a traditional public spring game? And how are you seeing that trending kind of across college football as well? 
Yeah, it's changing. Um, and it's kind of started changing a few years ago. And I think the pandemic kind of really caused us to make a lot of just take a step back and evaluate even just spring football in general. Um, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I know there's some programs I've talked to and coaches where they're they're not even, uh, you know, practicing the way we used to practice for spring ball, you know, in terms of the, the live goes with your guys. And if you notice the last several years, even before the pandemic, that some of the spring games have become just kind of like tag or, you know, not much live tackling. And and uh, so, you know, it's just really kind of, you know, for me, I, I want to be able to have 15 great days of us getting better. You only got so many days because you can't do that stuff with your guys in the summertime. And we only have so many opportunities for that. So to me, I, I do think there's a, there's a, there's a, a shifting that's happening, you know, and, and being able to tell you, and you just got to do what's best for your program. You got to do what you feel your guys need. And, and, you know, we, we got a lot of guys dinged up last year. Um, uh, even it started in spring football, you know, and, and, and it just continued. And so um, it just, you, you go through, we had a lot of meetings about this and have had, you know, coach Wellman uh, has been a part of an NFL study and it continues to be a part of those as well. And we're using his expertise in that as, as, as part of our decision-making. And as you go through and evaluate that part, it's like I said, it's a calendar thought process, but I, I do think you're going to see that shifting um, as we move forward. And it's, it's probably starting this year. Yep. Uh, what are you seeing from them this spring in regards to the mentality of it all, in regards to that sort of sense of urgency to making sure you get this thing turned right back around real quickly? Yeah, I, I think leaning heavily on them. And, you know, those guys you just mentioned there, the, the core of the guys that came to see me um, – right after the last game of the season, you know, in my office that Sunday morning and, and, uh, you know, just really saying, coach, you know, this is, this isn't going to happen again, you know? And so, uh, yeah, uh, there's an urgency from them. Uh, there's a lot of strong leadership from them. Um, you know, Cam Jones, uh, is it the, one of the most vocal guys about that, you know, monsters one you mentioned in Taiwan and Jalen Williams and Matt Bedford. And, you know, even, I tell you what, a guy that's really stepped up to me, um, you know, is AJ Barner. Um, even though he's younger, uh, per se, uh, there's a maturity to him. Uh, he, and he was here, you know, and was a part and was, was saw the things done a certain way, you know, his first year here. And then obviously ex experienced last year and, and how, knows how that felt, you know, and those guys all know how that felt and they don't, they don't want that again, you know. So uh, we're, I, I think it's created a different urgency without a doubt. And it's going to affect uh, the way our summer goes, the things, some things we're going to do over the summer. And uh, they understand what has to happen. And uh, so that excites me, you know, and, but that's what you need. You need guys that uh, have been there through the, the ups and the downs and that gives them a maturity, but it also creates an urgency. And, and uh, you know, there's no doubt we've got a lot of new faces as well, but, but uh, we also got a lot of strong leadership and guys that have decided maybe even to come back for this additional year when they could have gone, gone on to the NFL and uh, pursued that and said, you know what, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to finish uh, the job here and, and, and make sure that, uh, that my last season here is special. So those guys are at the forefront of that, which excites me. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, you know, from a from a numbers perspective, you know, you'd, you'd have to say the quarterback room uh, has because uh, we haven't had that, you know, been f for a while. You know, to be able to have that many guys that are competing, you know, so that gives you uh, a lot of a uh, lot of positives to work through um, on that side of the ball. And I and I think the receiver room uh, probably has the most to prove just because of the opposite of that you got a lot of new faces you know and, and it's a position that didn't perform uh, even close to the level uh that, that i expected them to in the fall and and uh, i think anybody and then them, themselves included you know and then there's no question that the offensive line is always going to be to me it's a huge focus focal point of uh, gotta get better gotta play better gotta prepare better um uh do like things i'm seeing from that group without question uh but at the same time you know and that's just a constant 
to me, that that would be a constant focus because that's where you, you know, it's you know, big men lead the way. You know, they you got to have that group leading you uh, on both sides of the football. And then uh, you look, you flip defensively. You know, I, I think our secondary would be one of our strengths. You know, uh, for this team, um, and, and I think uh, with with the D line having so many new faces. I'd say probably that'd be the one you got to focus on the most. To, to, you know, and I like the group, you know, uh, and I, I think we've uh, we're, we're a lot bigger up uh, in that side of the ball than we were a year ago, which I really I knew was you know by design. You know, that's the guys that we brought here, and the the, uh, the transfers we brought in were picked for that reason. And and uh, so, uh, but they need to continue to develop it, and they have. They've had. I thought they've had a really good start, and Coach Randolph's done a great job with them. And and I tell you, J.H. Tevis is a guy that I I, know I didn't mention him before, but um, not just as a player only, but um, you know, you're talking a you know a Cal graduate, you know, that's here now getting his MBA, uh, very mature. Uh, but I, so I, I want him in that room, even though he's not he's not been here, uh, and he's his, he's proven to me to be a guy that that can step up and lead, you know. But that's a group that the D line group has to be, uh, to me, a difference maker's force and stopping the run and creating pressure, you know. So those would be the ones that stick out to me. Yeah, that's it's a good, good, good question. You got three of the five new faces in there, and and uh, you know new personalities, and then guys that uh, two of them had worked together before, uh, you know, with with Adam and and Craig, but uh, um, with obviously Walt being the new leader, um, and everybody else meshing together. Um, um, I like what I'm seeing. You know, obviously it's uh, you know time is the biggest uh, indicator of all these things. You know, and, and it gets it gets revealed uh, how it truly is. But uh, uh, from my perception and involvement and, and observation of practice, just uh, you know what I just see is I see just a group of unselfish guys that that. Uh, um, don't care gets credit because it's not about them and they're just doing everything they can do to make sure their guys are proving every single day and they're buying into the new system and buying into everything we're doing from with call coach bell's leadership and being able to to work well together you know and, and i think you know you're not you're not scheming as a, as a staff right now against a, an opposing you know uh defense per se but you're doing a lot of install and, and you're definitely sharing ideas and going through things and and like i said i think when you got a bunch of humble guys that that are really working hard for each other and for the for the betterment of the team that's what you want you know and and you got to have a strong leader and that's what coach bell is by personality and by vision and by what he what he has you know as as i always say and was taught this you know years ago that you know you, you have conviction in your leadership when it's a based on a vision of perfection when you know exactly what you're looking for and what it's supposed to look like and and that's what the leader's job is and so that's what coach bell's job is is to to really to be able to articulate that vision and what he what he wants and how he wants it done on a consistent basis and then they got to buy into that as a staff and and getting their guys to to practice practice extremely hard and we've tried to really go back to just basics and fundamentals of how we're going block the right way how we're going to do a great job fundamentally at the in the skill positions in space and and so coaches a big part of that and those guys got to buy into that and, and they have and i feel like there's just a is i like what i'm seeing from them but obviously we're not uh playing against uh, opponents yet and you're not as stressed as regard to that but but as far as just personality wise and energy and and just togetherness that's been a, a big been really good to see and i just con expect that to continue to grow Yeah, I, I feel like I have from what I want to be able to be involved. Uh, I would say there's a lot of changes. Yeah, uh, I would say that's a significant amount of changes and by design, and that's what I wanted. And and as we went through and made these decisions to make these changes and and so uh, a, a lot of ownership from that, uh, from from Coach Bell and as he brings things to us. So, and, it's, and I say that in regards to, you know, there's still, you know, certain conceptual things you do, you know, uh, 
run game wise and in regards to what you, you may call some things a little different, but you do have, but there's no question there's, you know, significant change, you know, in the, in the passing game and the run game and, and, and all the different things we're doing. So that to me is really what, uh, you know, is important is now that we learn to, to master those and execute those. And that's really what it's going to come down to as we, as we, as, as an offensive staff, because the other day it's about scoring points. I mean, that's the bottom line. You got to protect the football and score points. And you do that by creating explosive plays in the run game and the throw game. So that's been the focus and that will continue to be. And, but yeah, it's some, some to answer your question, significant changes. Yes. Awesome. Have a great day. Elio.